What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at this absolutely gorgeous ProTech TR3 Custom from Blade Show West. Uh, I've got a stack of these up on the site, just put them up, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, as I normally do. But I uh, wanted to do a very quick video on this one, as uh, I just wanted to show the knife. I, uh, I threw a short of it up on YouTube uh, first thing this morning. And uh, gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And this is the one I wanted to talk about today. So let's uh, get started on this. Oh, very smooth, very smooth action. Heavy, heavy knife too. I was asked a few times for that actually, the weight. I should probably update that. Um, as a reminder guys, a lot of the knives featured on this YouTube channel are available on bladezilla.ca in Canada. We do ship down to the US, that is a no-brainer. Uh, so there we go, there's that knife right now, and I believe it is this knife right here. So, pretty cool. Um, had a bunch of Malibus, I've got a bunch of, geez, stacks and stacks of Mordaxes and uh, Malibus coming in in the coming days here as well. Uh, people have been asking for those, so bladezilla.ca, keep your eyes peeled there, and uh, I'll get some more of those guys up. Um, so, let's, where do we even start with this knife? Um, geez, I guess let's get some measurements. We'll kind of go through our normal process and then kind of talk about it, the value, uh, the rarity, etc. So we are coming in at just under eight inches. That's what she said. Uh, just under eight inches, uh, maybe actually a little bit over by like like a 32nd of an inch kind of thing. Blade length of three and three eighths sharpened. And overall handle length, what are we coming in at? Uh, four and a half roughly. I've got a tripod in front of my face. I actually don't see. Uh, this when I do these measurements just I get asked all the time I'm kind of looking around it so yeah about four and a half on the handle but blade wise to the center of the trail yeah you're about three and a half so nice nice big big knife excellent excellent knife I should say and it is uh, definitely uh, geez fits great in hand I wanted to get the weight on this before I forget because I think I actually do need to update the uh, spec sheet on it because I don't think I ever got it so let's do that real quick as well. I might even pause the video while I do it. We'll see. We'll see how frisky I'm feeling. Uh, but let's get a weight on this here. Uh, and it's heavy, guys. It's stainless, so I'm guessing five ounces. Six, seven. Oh, not even close. Some days I'm very close. Actually, hold on. Let's get that zero. Yeah, zero, zero. Six point seven ounces. Woof. That's a beast. That's a beast. So. Uh, absolutely beast of a knife. It's going to be very heavy on the handle end, but anyway, that's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, where do we start with this? Well, uh, it's it's the manual version. So if you if you come here to see this shootout, well, we're in Canada, we cannot have automatics. So it is the manual version, and just like the a lot of knives in the ProTech line, I wish they made manual versions of more of them. Uh, so right now I believe it's just the Mordax and the Malibu, and then now the TR3, they're kind of just getting their feet wet on those, uh, which is awesome. So where do we start on this? I am a extra large glove hand, and this thing fits me like butter. Like butter. Really, really nice design, really comfortable. We've got the flat top on the blade. No jimping, just very smooth beefy handle like look at the side profile on this it's uh she's got some girth to her once again that's what she said um it's it's a thick design but it's it doesn't it doesn't feel like a three and a half inch knife it definitely feels bigger which is nice um so that's handle size it's obviously going to be weighted this one because it's stainless it's going to fall right back in my hand which is fine i'd rather that versus the other way um as we look down the blade here, so like I said earlier, no jimping. And then down the spine of it, we've kind of got that little flat top. You're probably not going to use that, but you certainly could if you wanted to. And then it's uh, kind of flat towards the tip. No kind of expansion on the end. So that's something interesting. Um, S35 VN blade, I believe. And I think it says it right here. There you go, S35, which is fine. It's a great, great steel all around. Um, if I grab my little... Fancy light. Let's take a look inside here. We've got some big, big, thick, beefy cutouts inside this thing. Hopefully you can see that. 
one, two, three, kind of three verticals, one kind of here, and then another pocket in the back. So big cutouts for uh, skeletonization, which it's stainless steel, so uh, I've probably mentioned that about 15 times. Obviously that's an important um, material to remove when you are doing stainless, just because it is so naturally heavy. This same knife in aluminum would probably be, you know, four ounces to give you kind of perspective on that. And then uh, in terms of the other sweet little, uh, um, what am I looking for here? Specs, I suppose. It's got a, I believe it's a pearl button on this guy as well, which changes with light. Looks really cool. It's kind of got some green, some white. Well, it's pearl, so it looks really nice. The pattern itself is kind of like a, a diamond. Well, they're calling it, I think, relic. Um, is that what they're calling it, a relic pattern? Um, I just call it, you know, it's kind of triangular, triangular diamondy thing, even though there's no diamonds. You know, I, I make mistakes all the time on this, and uh, it's kind of funny. I like how a lot of people don't actually call me out on a lot of them, but like here I am calling this diamonds, and clearly they're not diamonds. But uh, in my head, I thought they were diamonds, <laughs> which is funny. But yeah, clearly it's triangles. Looks really good. And then if maybe my, my in my head I was thinking that uh, the pattern between them was kind of diamondy, but anyway, um, looks really good. Looks really really nice, and it's kind of got like this nice contour profile to it, which is nice. Uh, same profile as the rest of the TR3 Integrities, where you've kind of got that heavy um, jimping on the frame. You've kind of got that little uh, spot back here for a lanyard, which I in my previous video I kind of mentioned. I'm like, well, I'm not a big fan when knife companies put a split in the frame right there because you know sometimes if you yank on it too hard it'll split the frame i would assume it's held together pretty well and that won't happen but uh, i guess that's the way to do that without putting a physical hole through the entire thing dead center as you think on a custom uh, thumb studs i looked i've got i checked now four of these and they all have different color thumb studs so i don't know like they're close but one's a little more gold than the other and i wonder if that's part of the design i don't know I don't know if that really bothers anyone, but uh, they're all like that, so that's interesting. Interesting choice. Um, they are numbered, I believe. I thought they were numbered. Maybe they're not. <clears throat> I think there's only about 50 of them, which is crazy. And uh, I thought they were numbered. Maybe I'm thinking the Mordaxes were numbered. I thought they were right here. I suppose not. And let's see, is it hiding anywhere in here? Protect's usually pretty right in your face, it'll be like there or there. But uh, anyway, I, th I heard there was only 50 of these made, which, not surprising on their customs. I think on the Mordax, which is beside me, there's also 50 made. Um, same kind of thing. Their clip's awesome as well, very deep carry, and as you can see, you're looking at about that much sticking out of your pocket, which is cool, good amount. You're not gonna have any issues there. It is attached as well underneath the clip which is kind of cool and that's why the reason for that window is so you can get in there it looks to be t10s kind of scattered through scattered throughout other than under here that's probably t6s on the clip very baby little heads and then on the front here once again yeah here probably t8 or 10 oh where's that a uh, that might be an allen key on there yeah that is uh, once again as i look through the camera lens i see something different than uh, what i'm looking at which is a tripod head uh, which is fine but yeah that's cool and then, yeah, the blank disc on the back, that's a nice little touch. I always like when they do that on the, the non-show side. Uh, nice little touches. And also, that's an cool, interesting spot for the window, now that I think about this. You know, it's just... Most, most people, or most manufacturers, when they put this together, they really favor kind of like a two-thirds or half back on a backspacer. But when they press this together, I'm kind of curious the purpose for putting a window there. When clearly you could literally just kind of keep that design going right through. And maybe it has to do with people kind of, they want to move it around in their palm a little, a little bit. You know, the grip on the back is obviously for in palm or kind of a reverse grip. But uh, yeah, that's cool. Certainly cool. Ooh, silky smooth action on this one as well. I will stick with what I said in my previous video where I said I would love to see a 
flipper version of this design, which they probably won't do, but uh, I think that would just be so cool, just to kind of get in there with the Malibu flipper, get in there with the Mordax style. Like, it just, I love flippers, you know that. I'm a sheer Gorf slut, and uh, certainly not opposed to more flipper designs being in the collection. But, you know, thumb studs work, especially when it's tucked away nicely. And these thumb studs, as I mentioned, they're like a kind of a volcano rounded setup, which is really nice to access and kind of utilize. It's not harsh, it's not square, just comfortable. Kind of in that nice consistent theme to it. I'm trying to figure out where, where or if they are numbered, but uh, doing that live on camera is probably not ideal. It may not be numbered. But, uh, totally fine. Totally fine. Gorgeous knife. Um, as far as comparables, let's grab a, grab a couple Sabenzas that I have. Trying very hard to keep this video as short as possible today. Just got a lot to do. Got a lot of things to film. And I could just end up talking for half an hour by accident. So there's your large Sabenza. Where's my small? There we go. Small Sabenza. Just to add perspective, because I know it is a newer design, especially for kind of the Canadian customers, because they've done the TR3 for a while, obviously, but not in the manual. So there's kind of your two sizes. I'd say it sizes more towards a large Sebenza than anything. And remember that uh, the camera angle definitely changes perspective. So I'll give you both. Now it looks a little more like that. Um, Size-wise, I have a hinderer. Let's do that. A flipper eclipse. I can also throw in here to give you an idea of the quality of finish as well, which, uh, in my opinion, is far above the hinder. It's not even close. But uh, there you go. Something to think about. And uh, obviously, not being a frame lock, it's a little bit uh, different. Button lock's pretty slick. Uh, and then in the Shiro world, I'll grab my, my Neon and my Quantum. So there's your Neon. I swear, just showing you all the different knives is what delays this out. Five, ten minutes every video. Uh, there's your Quantum. There's your Neon to give you, kind of size-wise, really good. Really good sizing on this guy. Really nice design. And when I look at it, you kind of see like a raised profile, kind of from the side where you kind of feel like it's diamonds, but it's really just triangles. It's kind of funny how that works. And uh, just because they're local, let's do my Pyrenees, Stang Blade Works in Alberta, down the road from me, like 300 kilometers down the road, but still, the roads, it's down there. Um, there you go. Pretty nice comparison as well. Still have this guy floating around. And the Kami or Kami, whatever you want to call it as well, which is actually kind of a little smaller than this one, but perspective wise, it's a good matchup, I'd say. Good comparison. Pretty cool. And uh, what else? I wanted to re show you the box on this one just because there's not a lot of specs on these Blade West ones. So I'll just show you the specs if you want to snap and read that. Uh, integrity manual relic 17 stonewash steel s 35 vn stonewash blade pearl button double stud set wide deep carry clip there you go so I, I think i hit it all i think i hit all the specs so pretty cool knife super unique for a tr3 definitely in a manual and uh they're up on the site now uh, by the time this video goes up i'm not too sure the protect stuff seems to be going pretty quick right now uh but uh like I said, I'm definitely beefing it up. Oh, and I missed this in the back on the bottom here. Also good to have for reverse grips. So kind of in line with the two stage. You also have that on the bottom of the frame. Something to think about. All right, guys. Well, I will leave you at that. Hopefully we're uh, under 15 minutes, which was my goal. And uh, have yourself a fantastic week. Check out bladezilla.ca. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, and a Facebook page. Search that out because that's just fresh off the... Uh, fresh out of the kitchen. All right, guys. Have a good one. Peace.